Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Britt Brings It Home. Today, we are talking about the connection between eczema and the gut. I explained in my last eczema video a little bit about what eczema is. It's inflammation of the skin. People with eczema experience symptoms like dry, itching, red skin. Sometimes they get little fluid-filled bubbles on their skin, kind of like little blisters. So lots of skin problems involved in eczema. But did you know that eczema is actually an outward sign of what's going on inside your body? So we're gonna talk about the connection between eczema and the gut in this video. Okay guys, so I am doing a whole series of videos all about eczema. What it is, what causes it, my experience with eczema, topical remedies, and more. So be sure to stick around for those, especially if you have eczema or someone you know, one of your loved ones has eczema, be sure to come back and watch the rest of the videos in this series. And be sure to subscribe and click the bell button so that you don't miss it when I come out with a new video in this series or another video. I share all kinds of things here to help you create a healthy and organized home and life. So, like I said, eczema is actually an outward sign of what is going on inside your body. And not just eczema, but acne and other skin issues are a good sign that something is not right on the inside. Your body is smart. God designed it that way. And it lets you know when something is off. The same thing goes with hormones. Ladies, if you are having period problems or you're not having your period at all and you're not pregnant, that's a good sign that something is off with your hormones. So our body communicates with us. We just need to make sure that we are being observant and listening to our bodies and recognizing those signals it's giving us and changes that are happening in our body. So this is a good idea for everyone, whether you have eczema or not, it's a good idea to just be more observant. Be observant of the foods that you're eating, what you're putting into your body and what things you're putting on your body and what kind of an effect it has on your body. How is your body responding to the foods that you're eating? Are you experiencing bloating? Do you have skin issues? Do you have symptoms of IBS? What's going on? Part of my healing process with eczema was keeping a journal and keeping track of the foods I ate each day and what I noticed, how I felt after eating those foods. And yes, it was work there at the beginning when I was starting to heal, it was work trying to figure out what I was eating that was causing these different symptoms but it is definitely worth it to be able to figure out what your body doesn't like and to fix it, to take care of that problem. So anyways, when we get to the root cause of eczema and other skin issues, it is usually gut related. You've probably heard a lot of people talking about the gut recently. Gut health is becoming a bigger and bigger topic as we are learning more about the gut. Even though gut health is pretty new in popularity, Hippocrates was quoted more than 2000 years ago as saying all disease begins in the gut. So he noticed the connection way before there were CT scans and MRIs and all this testing that we have now. And it took scientists and doctors about 2,000 years to do the studies and prove the connection. Many conventional doctors still say that there is no cure for eczema and the cause of eczema is unknown. But unlike most conventional doctors, holistic doctors and functional medicine doctors look at the body as a whole and how different systems of the body relate to each other. And they are more focused on getting to the root cause of eczema and other diseases. So with research that has been done on the gut, they've been able to figure out that eczema along with many other diseases like celiac disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, allergies, rheumatoid arthritis, and more are caused by gut issues. Just like Hippocrates said thousands of years ago. There's still a lot more to learn about the gut though. Scientists and doctors do not know everything about the gut. Scientists don't know everything about the world. And I believe that we won't. We won't know everything about the human body and about the world until we get to heaven and we are able to ask God ourselves. But there's still studies that can be done and need to be done 
to find out more about the gut. But I am amazed as I'm researching and learning more about the gut and all the problems that stem from gut issues. Okay, so we know gut issues can cause lots of problems. How do issues in the gut cause eczema on the skin? I'm glad you asked, let me share with you. First of all, let's define the word gut. When people use the word gut, they're actually usually talking about the whole gastrointestinal tract. It starts in your mouth, when you put the food into your mouth, and then your esophagus, and then it goes to your stomach, and then your small intestine, and your large intestine, all the way to your rectum. Sorry if it's TMI. I shared in my last eczema video that eczema is actually an autoimmune disease. And that is where your immune system attacks your skin. But why? <laughs> why is your immune system on attack mode? Usually it is because of a condition called leaky gut. You may have heard of that. That's becoming more and more popular too. So leaky gut is a condition where the lining of your intestines actually leak. So in your intestinal wall, so this is your this is your tube, your intestine, in that wall there, there are some things called tight junctures. They are just what they sound like. They are tight, they help to hold the intestinal wall together. And that intestinal wall separates your intestinal tube, which carries your food, from your bloodstream, which that is where the nutrients from your food go, and they are carried by your blood to the different parts of your body. Well, when you have leaky gut, these tight junctures start to separate. They're not tight anymore. And when they have separated, things like bacteria, toxins, and food particles are able to leave your intestinal tube and go into the bloodstream. And when that happens, when your gut leaks, your immune system goes on attack mode. Your immune system is able to sense these foreign invaders in the bloodstream and it starts to fight. And about 70% of your immune system is actually in your gut. So it's right there. It's ready to go. It's ready to attack whenever there is a foreign invader. I like to think of the immune system as like the national guard. Your white blood cells in your immune system are like the National Guard soldiers, and they are ready to attack and fight any foreign invaders that enter into the body. So when these substances leak into the bloodstream, your immune system starts to fight them. And when your immune system is on attack, it causes inflammation in the body. And it can show up as inflammation in different parts of the body, but in eczema, that inflammation shows up on the skin. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on the immune system. Like I said, the body is smart. God designed it to, to work and do what it's supposed to do. And inflammation can be a really good thing. Think of like when you get a cut and it scabs over. That is inflammation. Your inflammation helps your body to be able to heal. However, it's not a good thing when your immune system continues to attack and cause inflammation when there's not actually a sickness or an injury, it's just a gut that continues to leak. Okay, so what even causes leaky gut in the first place? Why do we get leaky gut? Again, I'm glad you asked, let me tell you. Leaky gut can be caused from one or a few of these different things. Number one, it can be partly due to your DNA. Some people are just biologically more prone to getting leaky gut. Number two is chronic stress. So when we are stressed, our hormone cortisol goes up. Cortisol is known as our stress hormone. Well, when we have really high amounts of cortisol, that is something that causes our gut to leak that causes those tight junctures to start to separate. And with all the things that we have going on these days and all the pressure that is put upon us by other people and by ourselves, chronic stress is very, very common. Another thing that's very common these days and can cause leaky gut, cause number three is environmental toxins. So like when you eat food that is not organic, it is sprayed with pesticides and glyphosate, or which is the main ingredient in Roundup, 
and that's a toxin that causes lots of problems that can cause leaky gut another toxin is mold if you are exposed to mold maybe you have mold in your home or where you work lots of exposure to that mold can cause leaky gut and other problems and we have toxins in our personal care products our beauty products our toothpaste our deodorant all these products that we're using can have toxic harmful ingredients in them and those ingredients even if we just put it on our skin a lot of those ingredients are able to get into our body into our bloodstream into our gut and can cause that leaky gut okay cause number four of leaky gut is diet the standard american diet has lots and lots of sugar lots of processed food excess amounts of processed carbohydrates like bread and crackers and cookies and cupcakes and all of those things and all those inflammatory foods and low amounts of fiber we need fiber and we're not getting enough and that is a recipe for leaky gut cause number five of leaky gut is medication so medications like aspirin, Motrin, proton pump inhibitors, all those different medications that we're taking can cause our gut to leak. Okay, cause number six of leaky gut is dysbiosis. So dysbiosis is an imbalance of bacteria in your intestines. So you need bacteria. Bacteria in your intestines helps with digestion. It helps boost your immune system. It helps with so many things but bacteria can cause problems. So it's a problem when we have too much bacteria in the wrong place, like our small intestine. The majority of the bacteria should be in our large intestine. So if you have too much in your small intestine, that's called SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. And that can cause a lot of bloating and digestion problems. Or another part of dysbiosis is that we can have too much bad bacteria and not enough good bacteria. So another function of the good bacteria in our gut is that it helps to keep the bad bacteria down. It keeps that population of the bad bacteria low. And so that helps us to fight against sicknesses because that good bacteria is taking up all the space and not letting as much of the bad bacteria live and take up space in our intestines. However, we're going back to diet. In our standard American diet, we are eating lots and lots of foods that feed that bad bacteria and cause them to grow. So again, sugar, artificial sweeteners, processed foods, refined carbs, food additives, like food coloring and artificial flavorings, things like that, and alcohol, all those things, feed the bad bacteria and help that bad bacteria to grow and grow and grow. I know a lot of Americans eat way too much of those foods. Instead, we should be focused on feeding the good bacteria so that can grow. So foods that feed our good bacteria are called prebiotics. Prebiotics are foods that contain a lot of fiber. So think like vegetables, beans, and fruit. Those are foods for your good bacteria. The fiber in those foods is actually not digested in your stomach or in your small intestine. It passes through those organs to our large intestine. And it's there that our good bacteria ferments that fiber and then uses it as food so that it can grow and do all the great things that our good bacteria does to keep us healthy. So dysbiosis is not just caused by our diet. Dysbiosis can actually start at birth. So if you are an adult and you are experiencing eczema, it could be due to how you were born. And this may be TMI, especially if you're a guy. So if you want to, you can skip ahead a minute or so. But if your mom had you vaginally, you came out her vagina, you got a big dose of good bacteria. But if you were born through C-section, you did not pass through the vagina, you did not get all that good bacteria. And studies have been done to show that babies born with through C-section do not have as much diversity in their gut. And in our gut, we need to have diversity. We need to have all kinds of different 
bacteria, good bacteria. And we'll talk more about that later in a coming video. Another contributing factor to dysbiosis is if you were breastfed or not. Again, studies have shown that babies that were mainly breastfed have more diversity in their gut bacteria than babies that were mainly fed with formula. And then one more factor that contributes to dysbiosis is the use of antibiotics. So you probably know antibiotics, well anti means not or against, biotics, it's talking about bacteria. So antibiotics kill bacteria and antibiotics do not know what is good bacteria and what is bad bacteria. It just kills bacteria. That's it. And so when people take antibiotics, their gut microbiome, their bacteria in their gut gets destroyed. Their good bacteria and their bad bacteria both go down. And it can take years, years and years and years after taking a round of antibiotics to get your gut back in balance and back how it should be and to get all that good bacteria again. And these days with COVID going on, we are pushed to disinfect and sanitize and use antibacterial soap and hand sanitizer and all these things to get rid of bacteria. And that hurts our microbiome and that can cause a lot of problems. It might not be showing up right away, but it may cause a problem in the future. And by the way, when hand sanitizer bottles say that they kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria, guess what it doesn't kill? That 0.01% of bacteria that it doesn't kill are the superbugs, the strong, bad bacteria that causes greater problems. So you're killing your good bacteria and letting the strong bad bacteria stay alive. So it's not helping you out at all. We want that good bacteria there. We want it to help keep down our population of bad bacteria and to help our immune system and help keep us healthy. All right, so that's enough of that for now. We talked about what causes eczema. What is it? Yeah. Leaky gut. Good. If you can't tell, I used to be a teacher. I like to teach and ask questions and make sure people are following following along with me. I'm sorry this video is kind of a downer. We're talking about negative things, you know, bad things happening in our body. We will get to the good stuff soon. But I believe it's important to get to the root cause and understand what is going on before we can even start to heal. So in order to heal eczema, we've got to heal our gut. So in my next few videos, we're going to talk about how to go about healing the gut and how to heal eczema. So make sure you come back for those. And again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell button so that you can be a part of my community here and be notified when I come out with the next video. Also be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with a friend that would find it helpful too, maybe another friend that has eczema or has a child that has eczema, definitely share it with them. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. From my home to yours, see you next time.